Scripture, the finest frontier. These are the voyages of Skylab Omega, its five-month mission to spread the gospel across the galaxy, to share God's love with civilization, to boldly go where one Savior has gone before. Come with us now as we blast through the Bible with Commander Cosmos, Space Ranger. Greetings, Space Cadets. Commander Cosmos, Space Ranger. At your service. Well, we had a great time, an amazing time on planet Ephesus. Mm, we got to talk about Jesus, and they were so excited to hear about it. In fact, Lieutenant Dan got to share God's word with the entire planet, and I have never seen so many people come to Jesus. The king was so excited that he threw a great feast to celebrate. Oh, we didn't want to leave, but, you know, we had to come back and continue our mission in space. But we have received a few letters from some friends that we made down there. Oh, oh here, I'll read one to you. Let me have a seat. Dear Skylab Omega, thank you for teaching us about Jesus. Love the Ephesians. Here's another. Dear... Oh, oh, I'm stuck. <clears throat> Hello? Help! Somebody help! <clears throat> oh, this is terrible. Visitor arriving. Visitor oh. arriving. Why am I always five, stuck in a weird four, place when two, company comes? Two, one. <clears throat> uh. Ah, Commander Cosmos. <laughs> you always find the strangest places to sit. A little help. <clears throat> yeah. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Yago, well, you have a habit of dropping in unannounced. I wanted to check in your thruster engines and make sure all of your systems are running properly. Oh, yes, everything's been running great. I'll be the judge of that. Okay. I see you're still flying around the galaxy preaching your message. Oh, yes, that's our calling. Ah, yes, your calling. I don't see why your god has you fly around the galaxy talking about him. Oh, but... Our God doesn't make us do anything. You make it sound like a punishment. In fact, it's a great privilege. Ah, yes, like your great apostle Paul had the privilege of being beaten and thrown in jail. That is true. Paul did suffer for his faith. But God led him to so many great places and used him in so many powerful ways. Here, let me get out the word of God and I'll show you. Right. Ah. Now, at this time, the Apostle Paul was, in the, was on trial in Philippi. Again, that Paul is such a jailbird. <laughs> but God gave Paul the honor of speaking his message to a king. Uh, a king? What king? King Agrippa. You see, there was this man named Festus who was the governor of Judea, and the Jews insisted that Paul be arrested. Uh, arrested for what? What did Paul do? All he did was talk about Jesus. Uh, that is ridiculous. No man should be arrested for saying what is in his heart. You're right. But the Jews thought that Paul was wrong about Jesus. Uh, still, no man should be thrown in jail for saying what he believes. Yes, well, you know, he wasn't accused of a proper crime, but... Festus thought he should, so he asked his friend, King Agrippa, to help him decide which crime to charge Paul with. Huh. Paul was brought in chains to explain everything to them. What did Paul say? He <laughs> told them his whole life story. Ah, you mean how Paul was raised a devout Jew and became a Jewish leader himself. Why, you've been paying attention. And did he also say how badly he treated the Christians? He did. And then he told them about how the bright light blinded him on the road to Damascus. Ah, yes, and then Jesus spoke to Paul. Yes, and then Paul became a Christian. And God sent him to spread the good news that Jesus is the Lord. Yes, to places like Jerusalem and Judea and to the Gentiles. That's we right. know this, but this is what got Paul arrested in the first place. Yes, though, that's what Festus said. He thought that Paul must be crazy to keep preaching God's word, even when he's being thrown in jail for doing it. But Paul spoke to King Agrippa because he knew the king understood Jewish law. That is crazy. Did he think in such a short amount of time he could get the king to believe in the Jesus? Do you know that that's the very same question that King Agrippa asked? Huh. Yeah. Let, let me get out the virtual Bible and I'll show you what Paul said. All right. Paul replied, short time or long, I pray God that not only you, 
but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. <laughs> Sometimes this Paul impresses me. He was able to stand in front of a room of important people and say he would pray for them, no matter how long it took. Well, he was simply fulfilling the mission that God gave him. Mission? What mission? The calling. Why, it's the same mission that we all have even today. Huh. To tell everyone that Jesus died to take away our sins and to pray that they believe in him and ask him to come into their hearts so that they can live with him forever. Okay. Okay. Okay what? Okay. I believe. You believe? I do. You have convinced me. You have convinced me that this Jesus is the Lord who died for my sins. I want to follow him. You do? I do. At first, I thought your Lieutenant Dan only followed the Jesus because he's used to taking orders. And <laughs> Ambassador Nerfutu, <laughs> he's simple and easy to convince. <laughs> but you took a long time to convince. Well, I am a captain, and I don't take orders from anyone. I'm not used to anyways, not even from God's son. Like this King Agrippa, I wanted to hear your whole story to make sure this Jesus was for real. And now? Well, you and your crew and everyone who follows Jesus all seem to uh, change. You all seem to know something all of these kids know. And now, I will say it with all of you. Jesus, Jesus is, is the, the same, same yesterday, yesterday today, today, and, and forever. forever. Oh, this is wonderful news, Yago. Come, I'll pray with you. After you, Commander. Okay.